ginger ever had. She just had her first calf this spring. She now belongs to my friends at Down Home Farm. And they're off on a getaway and they've asked me to come milk for them. But she's a great cow. Good New Zealand A2A2 genetics jersey. So I clean her up, I milk out the plugs at the end of each teat that form to keep the milk in there. And then we'll get to milking. So then once you have this daily supply of milk, you need to figure out how you're going to process all of that. We tend to skim most of it, save up the cream and make butter, take most of the skim milk and feed it back to the other animals, the pigs and the chickens. I'll get her milked off, and I'll show you what happens from there. This is the milk that we got from Nutmeg yesterday. So the cream has had a chance to rise to the top. We're gonna skim it and make some butter. Nice, thick, heavy cream. Basically we skim until we get down to the skim milk. And we'll take that out to Boots our pig. The key with this is we're going to let this cream come up to room temperature and if you just do that in ambient temperature over the course of the several hours it takes to get up to 68 degrees or so, the existing biology within the milk will start to culture it and so we'll have a cultured butter. If you wish to have a real sweet cream butter that is not cultured, you could raise the temperature of this cream in a water bath or even just on a pot in the stove. But I like to hit that sweet spot where it's got just a little bit of good biology going on so it's lightly fermented and then that cream with that and this is going to vary a lot depending on the biome of the individual cow and things that are present in the herd so results may vary depending on the animals in question but this particular cow Produces very clean milk. This is her first lactation. And so we'll just let it sit out for the better part of the day. And then I will show you an amazing trick for making butter on a homestead scale that will allow you to avoid all of the mess and difficulty that a lot of people tend to have using things like KitchenAid mixers and that sort of deal. You can certainly buy 
electric butter churns that have large glass vessels. They're pretty expensive though. They tend to run in the $500 range. And if you just have one cow, and this is something you're just doing once a week, I have a method that I think will help you out. There's our cream from about a gallon and a half of milk. This is a half gallon jar. So we'll let that come up to temperature. And that's about where you want your level in these jars for this technique, somewhere in that two thirds range or lower. And we'll just let this sit out and come up to temperature. We're gonna take this milk, skim milk, over to the pig. Great protein for her in this latter stage of her pregnancy. She's due to Pharaoh any old time here. Now, unlike pasteurized milk, in warmer weather, if I were to just leave this milk, Lola, that's enough. That's enough. Come here. Sit down. You behave yourself. Stay right there. There's Boots. So if I were to leave this milk out, it would just turn into yogurt. Unlike pasteurized milk, that would turn into something akin to vomit. You want some milk? Come on, Boots. Help yourself. So it's good for them if you can uh, clabber that milk. Gives them an extra dose of probiotics. She doesn't mind it just like this though, of course. For morning cereal. Look at the size of this pig. This cream has been sitting here in the sunny window for about five hours, something like that. So it's basically up to room temperature. Now, if you just had one jar of cream, you could just shake this and eventually it would turn into butter. Uh, cream that is cold, that is whipped, turns into whipped cream. Cream that is warm and then whipped turns into butter because the emulsion breaks and separates out into the butter fat and the butter milk. If you have a cow, you're gonna have one of these a day. And so when we have a cow that's in milk on farm, we'll store up about five of these and then do this process with all of them uh, and get it all done at once. It tends to be a bit messy with the washing and that sort of thing. So better to do it in batches. But um, I used to use a, a KitchenAid mixer with the whisk in it and ordered all sorts of different domes to go over the bowl and wrapped it in plastic and it's always spattering uh, cream up onto the mixer body itself and generally not a very pleasant process. When we uh, were kind of operating in a minimal sense trying to establish this homestead, I happened upon this approach through trial and error and uh, found it to be quite effective and may never go back to large batches unless I were milking two or three cows and then it might be worth you know going ahead and, and buying uh 
larger commercial style butter churn that would handle three gallons at a time or something like that. So at any rate, the magic tool for this is the immersion blender. So we're gonna put this into the cream for about 45 seconds and then we'll shake it and it'll come together 15 to 30 seconds, something like that. So I basically just put the blender in, use my hand as a shroud, just want the head of the immersion blender under the surface. For 45 seconds. And as you can see, we're already starting to get some butter fat breaking. And there we have it. You can see the butter. I'll give it a couple more seconds of shaking to get that butter to come together a little better. leaking a bit but anyway there we go now we'll strain this off and do the wash to get all the buttermilk out of the butter which will cause it to stay better longer we'll take our butter and buttermilk strain through the sieve Butter goes into an ice bath. Buttermilk. We can save for other purposes. Marinating chicken for frying. Just drinking. Making breads, desserts, things like that. Uh, also can go to the pigs. And then the rest of this butter, we will wash. So by breaking all of this up and freeing the buttermilk, that releases it from the butter fat and the ice bath causes the butter to firm up and start to coagulate. Now basically all of the ice is melted, so I will continue this process with just fresh water until the water in there is clear. Then we know that we've got all the buttermilk out. Second rinse. Third rinse. And a fourth rinse. We're going to go with about a teaspoon and yeah, half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then when we mix that in, more water will be freed.